Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of the heart and this shows a case of rupture of the interventricular septum post myocardial infarction. So let me just give you an overview and let's have a look at the labels. Here we can see the left ventricle and here is the area of rupture of the interventricular septum with a full thickness defect leading to the right ventricle. This is the right ventricle posteriorly and we can see that the wall is much thinner and let me just magnify this area of the defect. Here is the rupture. And here we are coming back to the left ventricle. We can also see that the myocardium is somewhat thinned in this region and this is due to the myocardial infarction. In fact, if we compare the thickness of the myocardium here to that here in this pale discolored area, we can see the marked difference in the thickness. This is just the pericardial fat and not part of the myocardium. Let's take a closer look at some of the complications of myocardial infarction. Complications can occur in the acute phase post-infarction or there can be chronic complications that take months or sometimes even years to develop such as chronic ischemic heart disease. As a result of myocardial infarction, there can of course be pump or contractile dysfunction giving rise to left or right ventricular failure depending on where the area of infarction is. There can also be myocardial rupture and this is the example that we are discussing here. If the rupture occurs in the free wall, this can give rise to hemopericardium and tamponade. However, if it occurs in the interventricular septum as it does here, this can give rise to left to right shunting and eventually there can be heart failure. Other complications include the presence of mural thrombosis as is seen here and there is a separate video describing this. Ventricular aneurysm with potential formation of thrombi. Here is a ventricular aneurysm with a mural thrombus and there is also a separate video describing this. There may be rupture of the papillary muscle giving rise to mitral valve regurgitation or after healing there may be scarring and again giving rise to shortening of the papillary muscle and therefore mitral regurgitation. Pericarditis is another complication. This occurs relatively soon after infarction. And here is another example. And again, there is a separate video describing this condition. These videos can be found in our virtual pathology museum. And here is an example of the homepage of the cardiovascular system chapter in our virtual pathology museum. All this is taken from our online pathology resource, PathWeb. Registration is free for full access to this virtual pathology museum and you can find the link in the video description. Scrolling down, we can see individual conditions and you may find the videos in these individual pages. So here is the case that we are currently discussing and you can find the video descriptions of other conditions if you click on these individual thumbnails. And let me show an example looking at the myocardial infarction with the aneurysm. When you reach this specific page, you may scroll down to view the videos describing clinical pathologic correlations of this particular entity. In summary, here we are looking at an example of ruptured interventricular septum secondary to myocardial infarction and this defect is full thickness in the septum joining the left and the right ventricles. This leads to left to right shunting and eventually can give rise to congestive heart failure. Thank you.